for you as well too. I will let the other folks here do their intros again and then I'll toss it back to me for what we're gonna have today. Hello everyone, my name is Felix Martinez. My pronouns are he, him, and his, or in Spanish, el. Uh, super happy and excited to be here reporting from Egan, Minnesota, where I've been shoveling the whole morning. We got a lot of snow, so I'm super tired, beat up, but super happy and excited to have a conversation with all of you. So thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Serana Robinson. I'm definitely excited to be back. Thank you for having me again. Um, and I'm logging in out of Duluth, Minnesota. And my pronouns are he, him, his. Definitely good to have you back with us, Serrano. And hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Sean Hayes. And my pronouns are he, him, and his. Also coming at you from Duluth, where we got a huge dumping of snow as well. So my shoulders and arms are a little tired, but excited to chat <laughs> yeah definitely i think the snow really took us all today and you know i think i think about i was sharing this with sean yesterday because we were chatting briefly and it was like you know back prior to covid and we were always all in the office this would be considered maybe somewhat of a snow day maybe uh, but now that we're all mostly for some of us working at home, there's no uh, snow days anymore because you're just sitting. <laughs> so no more snow days uh, for some of us. <laughs> uh, constantly working, constantly working, grinding, I would say. So just wanted to share that, but turning out to be a pretty nice day. So hopefully wherever you are in the state that um, your, the temperature is treating you well instead of the snow and getting some rest here and hopefully it all melts quickly away. Uh, we thought that, you know, today we would have a conversation, do a year re and review, you know, and, and obviously you have the holidays coming in and the new year as well too. This will actually, in fact, be our last episode uh, for this year, for 2022. Um, and 2023 comes in next year and that will be, I believe, on January what, 4th, Sean, or uh, I think it's the 4th, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, I'll double check. Or the 5th. One of those weeks, um, we will be back with the kitchen table conversations as usual. And we're hoping we have more folks, uh, more guest speakers next year. And definitely any of you who constantly tuned in to us are more than welcome to email Sean and let them know. Uh, about wanting to join these conversations with us live, you know. So Sean said it's January 12th <clears throat> that we will be back in the new year. Um, but I'll pass it on to Sean to sort of give us some highlights about some guests that joined us this year, past year, some of the conversations we've had, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I always appreciate that reminder to join the conversation um, because we love to hear from all of you um, and catch up and hear what you're thinking about. Um, but yeah, for me, um, I got to look back um, just before going live here today uh, at basically the last year of some really incredible conversations that we have had um, and as well as that, just some amazing, wonderful people who have also joined us as guest stars. Uh, so just wanted to shout out and just share appreciations and gratitude to those folks again for joining the conversation and taking time to come onto the kitchen table. Uh, we've got the amazing, incredible Sarah Curtis, uh, Executive Director at Menace Peacemakers. We had author and community organizer and speaker Chris Stark join us and talk about her latest uh, novel that came out at the beginning of this year, or maybe it was the end of last year, I can't remember, but um, that was an awesome conversation. And then we also got to be joined by two of our fantastic folks who were a part of our Community Leadership Institute. 
our second cohort. That was David Wang and Hunter Beckstrom, who joined us. And uh, if you remember, they came on and kind of shared about their experiences with the Community Leadership Institute and what that was like to be able to come in and connect with more men and masculine folks um, who are doing this kind of work and who are interested um, you know, in, in thinking about how men and masculine folks can um, come into this work to begin with or, or build up those muscles and, and how we can care for one another through that. Um, and as a aside, we are actually right now accepting applications for our third cohort of the Community Leadership Institute. So you still have time or your brother or your nephew or anyone else who you think might be interested, uh, that is a six month long leadership capacity building um, cohort that we do where we meet once a month uh, and have some conversations. Um, and so if you're interested in that, I will definitely drop the link in this description uh, and we'll share that a little later as well. So then going back to our list here, um, so, wow, some awesome conversations. And then, yes, so we also had guest star Steve Hen join the conversation. Do y'all remember that one where he was talking about his poetry and how he uses that to um, kind of decipher and maybe process his own masculinity and how he expresses that. We also had Gene Lee join the conversation, a healthy masculinity coach. I can't remember where Gene was from, but I think it was somewhere in the East Coast. Um, so it was great. Um, actually, Gene had reached out to us. Um, so we love that. Again, if you are someone who's interested in joining us, we want to have you on. So get in touch with us. Um, thanks again to Gene Lee for joining us. Um, and then our final and most excellent guest, uh, as all of them are most excellent, uh, was Matisse Moore, who joined us from the Brown Boy Project, um, where we had a really interesting conversation um, on how we can broaden how we define healthy masculinity and what that looks like. Is it just the fact that men and masculine folks know how to cry? Uh, or is it something a little bit more than that? Um, and how do we find that out for ourselves? So that was a really good one with Matisse. Um, so that was a lot of talking on my part, but I just want to say thank you again to all of those wonderful folks. Um, and while I'm thanking everybody, I'm going to thank all of you two here right now. Um, and Roderick and Ed and um, some of the other folks who have joined us on a more regular basis. Just send in love to all of y'all. Appreciate that, Sean, the review year and the review, sort of the highlights, particularly for the guests that have joined us, you know. We have so many conversations and talk about so many different various topics throughout the course of the year that um, sometimes it's hard to keep up with those conversations. Um, and we know that sometimes we re revisit some conversations and topics, but it's, we know it's always a different kind of conversation. It's the saying of like, every time you visit a truth, that truth becomes, transforms, or manifests into a different truth for you in that moment, depending on where your life is at, right, and your understanding of the world at the moment. Uh, appreciating definitely all the guests that came and joined and the reach outs and having them come talk about their work and what it means uh, to navigate masculinity and manhood and engagement in communities and the issues that are facing men's lives and how they're thinking about that or the work that they're doing. Um, I'm uh, particularly still struck by uh, Steve, I believe, right? The poet who, um, in the way that he took up poetry from a very uh, young age and to to this day and age and really being able to explore masculinity through poetry as a platform, right? And so I always think that creativity part is always needed for us to just be playful about masculinity and um to be creative about manhood and what it could mean and what it could think um i know i missed some of the guest speakers that came on as well too but really also really appreciating my good friend and colleague uh, matisse for the conversation around what does it really mean to liberate masculinity what does it mean uh, to understand 
um, in terms of a broader and or deeper understanding of healthy masculinity or, or healthy manhood? And how do we uh, create a definition that uh, can be broad enough and encompassing enough uh, or can be, you know? Um, I know that that conversation we, when we had it, it was just not enough time. And so we look forward to 2023 having them join us again, hopefully, uh, and continuing the conversation. And hopefully they can bring other brown boys uh, along in their network to have the conversation with us as well as we continue to explore, particularly here on this um, kitchen table on what healthy masculinity really means and looks like, right? Because I don't think that we've um, put out any uh, definite definition, but we uh, definitely talked about things that could potentially allow it to be healthy uh, as well. So I just wanted to highlight some of those things that really stood out for me uh, in the conversations. And definitely there were conversations where um, I think we thought we had nothing to talk about. And it ended up being that we, we had a lot of talk, things to talk about, right? Uh, and the organic uh, ways in which we have conversations and we build community um, is so vitally important in how we shape this space and design this space for men and masculine folks to really do explore with one another and build uh, community with one another. So much, much appreciation to that. Um, we also like, I think, uh, celebrated and did a shout out to our 50th conversation that happened this year, you know, so we had a, our 50th episode, quote unquote, in the kitchen table conversations, and we're looking forward to many more, uh, 50 more uh, in the next two years or so, and uh, we'll be at 100, and who knows what that will be like, uh, so I really look forward to that, but just wanted to highlight some of those things for me. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Sean and Peng. Uh, for me, it's been a uh, it's been an amazing year. A lot of ups and downs, uh, but super happy of having these amazing and rich conversations that have had allowed me to grow up as a man, as a friend, as a father, and, and realize that you know life it, it sometimes is hard. You know, it's very important to have these conversations just because sometimes we go through difficult times and we even that sometimes we portray to be a positive person that we're always helping each other and supporting you know behind the scenes we, we go through hardships you know we go through difficult times but this is the importance of being surrounded of you know people that can lift us when we're going through those times and seeing uh, just recently i think is the uh, DJ and co-host from the Ellen DeGeneres show, they just uh, die of suicide uh, just recently, a couple of days ago, maybe. It, it's just to create that awareness of, you know, that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to ask for help, you know, and even for men that sometimes I understand that's sometimes even hard for us to do that is to, to search for that, you know, understand that life doesn't need to be perfect and we are who we are thanks to those moments, those positive and, and negative moments that we go through life. But life is beautiful and we need to see it that way. You know, they're all learning uh, stones that we, they help us build who we are right now. And we need to learn to to never be afraid of, of look for help. And for me, these kitchen table conversations are being part of building me as a man, you know, building me as a friend, as a, as a spouse, uh, as a partner, as, a, as, you know, as a father. And in, it's been an honor to be surrounded of such amazing people and such ama uh, amazing people that being able to talk and, and bring their stories and share a little bit of their lives. And like Penn said, you know, I'm looking forward to 50 more. You know, there's so much, uh, so much people that can be part of this, that can share their stories to help us, you know, change, you know, masculinity, you know, rewrite what masculinity is and, and, and be sure that future generations of men, they're more vulnerable, they're more open to have these type of conversations, that we're better allies, not only from women and girls, from also LGBTQ, LGBTQ community and BIPOC community. So uh, we, we live in an amazing world and there's so many positive things. Unfortunately, sometimes we, those bad negative things just stay with us and, and sometimes they're hard to, to put them away, but surrounded around 
people like Penn, you know, Serrano, Sean, it, it's very healing. And I hope the people that are listening to this uh, kitchen table conversation have an opportunity to have a little bit of that. And if there's any topics that they want to learn or they want to show, and like uh, Sean said, you know, if you want to be part of it, you have something to share that can help us, you know, through other men and masculine folks to grow up as, as uh, men and masculine folks, please share with us. We're always open to, to suggestions and, and to, you know, invite you to be part of this. So thank you again. Yeah, definitely. Uh, echo what you're saying, Felix. Rest in peace to uh, Twitch. I think it's it just shows how important these conversations <clears throat> are in general. Um, and I think like so when I think about conversations like this and like the year that we've had, I think it's only amazing to be able to share these thoughts with people because I always say, even if you've done this for a long time, like nobody knows all of everything. So I think it's amazing for us to hear from each other in different ways um, that we may not have thought about things. Like I think I, I think about things in, in a certain way. And there's multiple times where I learned from each and every one of you on like how to look at it a different way. So I think, it, and, and even and even our guests, I think I'm like I'm uh, like appreciative that we have guests in general, right? Like people who are willing and open to share these conversations because they're like the same people that we are. You know, we've been doing this work for a while. These are things, feelings, beliefs that we have. Um, so I think it's only more like it's it's just more dope to see that like us sharing insights. Um, that's really what I love to do, like with people that I'm around in general. Um, I always say for me, like the definition of smart is like being able to learn more. It's not about how much you learn, how much you know. It's about being willing to learn more because don't nobody know everything, right? That's like one of those like weird ass facades where we're like, I know everything. And it's like, no, <laughs> you don't. Um, there's like, there's been millions of years before you and then there will be millions of years after you. So inherently there's nobody who knows everything throughout the moment, throughout, throughout the history of time. So I think that's just that's just even more important. Um, and even just to be specific too, like even when you're merging, um, you know, respectfully, like age differences as well. I feel like we have a weird like um, I feel like in general, not here, but in general, we have a weird like ageism in the world, like how we treat each other, whether it's folks that are younger, not listening or not being able to take information or not being able to. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe Peng is the only one. Um, but, you know, you know, maybe there's younger folks that's like not able or not easy to take information for older adults. Like they're like, you don't know what you're talking about. Like I'm living in this moment in time or it's vice versa. You know, when it's like an older person that's like, I don't need to listen to you. I've been along. I've been around this, 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 many, this many amount of years. But I think it's like I think it's foolishness on both parts, because no matter like where you were born or like how old you are, like you have a prime of a certain point of your life. And there's points of your life where you just weren't your best self. Like there's points in my life when I was younger than I just like, I didn't understand the things that was going on. So people who are older than me and people who are younger than me can teach me about these things. Um, so I think I just enjoy like the camaraderie of conversation in general. Um, I feel like I'm somebody who like, and I don't know if like we all feel this way sometimes, but like you struggle with the thoughts in your head or you're like, I wish there was just some fucking body that I can talk to or somebody that thinks this way, or maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it's both. Um, but I'll take that it's both of course. Um, you know, but it's just like, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's, so that's what I think about just the guests this last year um, is for me, it's just amazing to have these conversations just to have people to like, to even disagree with, like, I'm somebody who like finds the love in that, like in a weird way. Um, because again, I think nobody like really knows or understands everything in every way. So even if there's something that I don't agree with, I'm like, let me hear this person now. Cause one, I respect them. I have love for them. And that's conversation too. Like wh whatever happened to conversation, not only being positive, like <laughs> it's really not always going to be, I agree. Yes, you're right. There's going to be times where we need to learn from each other. Not where we want to, not when it's like beneficial, but where we need to, like, it's like life or death, you know, in that, in that situation where you got to be able to pay attention. You know, this person is really trying to help you. So I think that's kind of what like I'm getting from my, my, my sense of the year and my sense of having guests is like, I just love sharing insight. I love hearing different people um, talk about the ways they do what they do and why they do what they do as well. So. Yeah, dang. Um, definitely uh, connecting and resonating with everything y'all have shared so far too. Um, yeah, and I guess for me, the thing that comes to mind um, as I'm reflecting a little bit uh, on, you know, the folks who joined us in those conversations um, and all of the other ones, right, with our regulars, 
the crew. Um, and I think for me, you know, especially with our guest speakers, it's, it's a reminder of hope for me. It's a reminder that um, though, you know, some of the guests I know ahead of time and some of them I don't. And, and it's um, this really beautiful, I think, hopeful reminder for me that there are folks all over this world, all over this country who are having conversations like this, who are about building safe and uh, inclusive and welcoming communities. And that, you know, for me, um, you know, to be real, the last like week or two, I've really been struggling personally with my mental health and, um, you know, toddler struggles and th things like that. It's been a tough um, last few days for sure. Um, and so um, those reminders are like, um, you know, like the, the light at the end of the tunnel, not in a like I'm dying way, but uh, in a like, oh yeah, like there's a bigger picture, there's a bigger story happening, you know, though, though the things I'm dealing with feel like, you know, the world is tumbling down at certain moments. Um, it's like, no, I can actually remember to like look up. I can think about, oh, Felix, I almost called you the other night too. Uh, I was very close. <laughs> so it was one of those tough nights, but I talked to another friend instead who got back to me. But um, yeah, it's just like that, you know, the hope reminder for me is huge. And also like, you know, the ability through these conversations to like build closer with you guys um, to where, you know, I don't know, a year ago, I don't know if I would have thought about calling you Felix, you know, and, and so it's like, those things, um, these conversations and, and like practicing it intentionally uh, really does build trust and it builds, um, you know, this, this community and chosen family of mine personally. Um, and I think all of us, right. It just, it helps us um, know that we are not alone in the chaos and snowmageddon or whatever it is that you know each individual person is is dealing with you know so um the togetherness that 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 feels really important for me yeah i think that that's so true uh sean what what you shared there about like um sometimes us feeling burdened or feeling overwhelmed or feeling like there's just um, too much going on and how can I keep up with what's happening in work or in life or keep up with this idea of like trying to create and build community in a different way than the way that we're seeing it currently in the community. Um, we're reminded that there's so many people that are actually wanting to do good in the world that are doing good. And I think we've created such a good platform that allows us to bring in people and that that's what we want is for folks to come in and share that goodness, share that wealth of whatever it is that they're doing with us so that there's others who know about that work, right? And that we could be, we could be a platform so that they can actually um, reach a wider audience of folks because you never know who's doing what in the world. Um, but I think sometimes we can get very tunneled vision, excuse me, or very siloed in our own spheres of work and spheres of influence or spheres of whatever sphere that we're in. And we can think that that's just how the world is, but it, there's actually like so much more in it. So I think that cross sector piece of it um, is so vitally important uh, these days uh, and the cross sharing uh, between the different spheres of life and influence is really important for us to uh, maintain our own health and sanity around all these things and not feeling like we have to go and save everybody or do everything and then um, if we don't do it nobody else is going to do it but there's always somebody doing something out there which reminds me I was watching um, Lord of the Rings yesterday the Twin Towers you know and towards the end of the show, um, if any of you have seen it, uh, towards the end of that episode, I'm sure a lot of people have seen it, maybe, and maybe some haven't. Um, but Sam uh, was talking about, like, uh, why people didn't give up 
and why kept people kept going right towards the end of the story he, he was talking about how people kept going and even though when awe has been exhausted and you you feel like there's um no glimmer of like light at the end of the tunnel to sean's point you know um people keep going and people don't give up because he said that they believe that there's still some goodness out there right that there's still some goodness out there and that's why they keep going no matter what and so no matter the challenges no matter the barriers that are in the way it's because they believe that there is that and i think that that's so essential and so like foundational to us as uh people and us as uh, social beings quote unquote um of like that kindness uh, that i think um we hear normal wong talk about so much not niceness but like the kindness and practicing that for one another and i think that that's where that goodness comes from in that quote uh, so i think to to your point for sure sean um there is so much good in the world um, and when we don't see it we think that there's no more but there is pockets of it and there's a lot of it in some ways as well too you know totally agree with you Peng. absolutely uh yeah uh yesterday i was uh, having a conversation with my daughter you know and, and the importance of you know uh of taking those moments sometimes when we're next to our loved ones to you know to remind them that we love them and we care and and even to talk about what's going on you know uh you know she, she was one of the, the person that mentioned about the twitch i think is the, the the amazing you know guy who took his life you know and and having that conversation about it because sometimes we feel that way and sometimes you know we we think we're strong enough but we can handle everything and 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 we just decide to just keep letting that glass of water just filling up you know little by little because we think we can handle everything and and we're not perfect you know and 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 having these opportunities to talk to our loved ones is, is, is very important i'm i'm a man who have uh family members uh and people that i know that been you know close to taking their lives just because x or y reasons and and you know it's something that touched me in a way that it pushed me to do more, you know, just to be sure to, I want everyone to be sure it's okay. You know, I want to be sure that if I see someone that's silent, you know, to approach them and let them know, hey, buddy, are, are you okay? You know, there's anything we can help you that we can support you. And that's when I listen to Penn. We know there's a lot of positive and good people out there, you know, and we need to work to create conditions in our communities that people feel that there's, there's good out there you know even when things start getting dark and it is very important to create that awareness uh to learn about it i mean you know like serrano said we're not expert except peng and i, I said that as a joke you know but peng is, is, is an amazing role model and and i recently uh, was awarded with you know with an award by Yipa, and, and i in one of the things that i when i said my gratitude you know to the people that care and, and inspire me to to do this some of that people was people like peng people like sean you know people like ed you know serrano also been been part of this but in people that been fundamental on me as a man growing up and learning you know on how to become a better man and to become a better you know father etc and, and we need to look for those good people around us that can lift us social media and i said also here publicly thank you you know, to sean Peng and all all the people involved in this kitchen have i've been able to pro get soup you know and i've been able to to grow up you know and, and hopefully be a better father you know hopefully being a better friend and and like hearing to sean said i was close to call you you know hey you know you don't need to call me if you're going through a hard time even to share positive things Things, you know share with people that really care that, that that you know that want the best for you 
And, you know, this platform is for that. You know, we, we're sharing love, we're sharing respect, sharing our stories to hopefully some other men and masculine folks and people out there can learn hopefully from this thing and, and see how we can, you know, be part of this, you know, change that, that we want. And, and I, I'm super grateful. I just want to mention, you know, to you guys, how grateful I am to, to meet you guys, to, to be part of my life and, and to continue hopefully growing up together to, to, you know, create safer, you know, spaces where, you know, everybody feel respected, free of violence and, you know, commercial sexual exploitation and everything. So thank you. Yeah, there's a lot that was said, <laughs> a lot that I wanted to follow. So I had to write some of it down. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, and I think the only question Peng may not know is how many lakes it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop, only because the world doesn't know. So other than that, you're probably bad in a thousand. Um, <laughs> but there was one particular thing that you said, Peng, um, like nice versus kind. Like I really like that, just especially being like in Minnesota sometimes, like not being from here, I'm just like, I, de I, I, I debate all the time between is this actually being like a genuine kind person or being like Minnesota nice and not real at the same time. Um, another thing that like I definitely heard is um, is like we have like really good people out there. And I think that that's really true. Like I've seen like a lot of moments where like it just shines bright. And, I, and it's hard for me to say like, oh, I've seen bad people, but I've seen like people trying. That's kind of what I like call it. It's like I've seen people trying. Because when you try, sometimes you can fuck up, you can fail, you can do things the extremely wrong way. Um, so I've definitely seen like good though, and I think that's like that's that itself is my motivation to keep having conversations like this and to keep going. Like to see people who like I think I've said it throughout the year, but to see people, especially like friends of mine, who like pretend that they wouldn't care about certain things and you know pretend like they were too you know I don't know buff or strong or Iron Man for certain things. Like they kind of have an open heart and open mind now, like having like open conversations. Like is it perfect? No. Will they like come up to a kitchen table conversation? Probably not. But I think that's never like, you know, the realm either. Or maybe, maybe. I definitely see that. Um, and definitely hope that, you know, but I'm I'm a person that like definitely takes it like whatever I can get day by day. Um, so having a friend like being more engaged with their emotions or saying that they're not okay, I'm taking that as a W, you know, and let them know that that's okay, you know, that's absolutely right. And you know, me working with the kids, I'll never like down that as a highlight because that's two of the most important things that we even tell them to this day um every time we get a new kid in the room or a new youth which is very often we kind of go over the rules of the emotion chart and one thing i tell them is like it's okay to not be okay like you're not gonna you know you don't have to lie to yourself you're actually being more healthy to be honest to yourself you really know how to navigate like if i'm annoyed you know in a better day there's places that i can go that i'll be annoyed and maybe i'll i'll get over it maybe i'll be able to withstand the annoyed you know but in the days where I'm really, really annoyed, I know how to navigate, right? I'm not going to go to a place that I know that's going to annoy me, get annoyed, and then, like, start acting wild and be like, see, you pushed all my buttons. <laughs> like, I already knew what day I was having, right? So if I'm having an annoyed day, maybe do things that are not. And that's okay. Like, I have family members, friends. Like, I know I am a person, too, who can be of a fucking annoyance to people. I'm okay with that. So even if it means, like, not seeing me for the day, like, I'm cool with that. Do what you have to do to feel okay, to feel good, to feel good in your work, or to feel like pure, honestly, because it's not even good, but to feel pure, to feel like how you're actually feeling. Um, and I think like a really big thing that uh, that I noticed Felix say was that it is weird that we really think that we're like strong enough. And I'm not saying strong enough, like in a, in a way where we're not strong because we are. But I don't think anybody's like strong enough for the world we're in. Let's be honest. Like this world is very tough. <laughs> like I don't know why the fuck we're not like not us four, but we're not saying this more often. <laughs> like as a collective, this world, and maybe that's a part of it too, right? That's a part of male identity to be like, nah, this shit is not hard. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm struggling inside, and I want to burn every moment of this down. But on the outside, I'm okay. So I think that is a facade too. Like it, like what the. F this shit is really, really hard, like really hard. And to give perspective, I actually have no children. I mean, I have a dog, so I'm not going to lie. That's very fucking close. <laughs> if, if you don't have a kid and you have a dog, like you could tell that that's it's not the same. I don't, I don't take them to school. You know, there, there's not as many classes, but it's it's pretty leveled up there. But even myself, who, who more importantly have like, I would say, in my opinion, I have less like less commitments. That's just what I'm trying to say. Even with my life having less less commitments, it is very hard, very hard, like tough 
very hard, you know, and there's not a moment I'm, in my life where it's like super easy. There's moments where it feels really good. And that's my moments where I'm actually like doing what I need to do for my emotion, for my mental health, which is like working out Tai Chi. Those are the moments where it feels really good. And then that's when I'm like, okay, now I see what I need to do to get keep, to keep this balance in order, <laughs> you know, because again, like, you know, if you didn't hear from anybody, um, have I, have I had times where I succeeded? Yes. I'm in a moment in my life where at 27, I succeeded a goal of working with kids that I never thought would be true. And I rocked the shit. Like I rocked the show so good that like, I would never take a knock off of myself. But even that it's like, it's still hard for me. It's still tough. There's things that are like, yeah. So I think even with like bigging myself up, like there are days where I really need that balance. I need to talk my truth. I need to speak about what's actually bothering me, how I really feel. Um, so it's to the point now where like, even with friends, like I'm like, you know, it doesn't have to be just what we hang out for. Cause you know, that's a part of the male identity too, is like finding a, a thing to do. Right. Cause we don't want to have awkward conversations or Lord have mercy. We don't want to have quiet times, you know, we're thinking about our emotions. So let's fill it with a void of things. So I'm even like trying to have more times like that with friends where it's just, let's just talk if that's okay. Like, or if you have something on your mind, like I'm not just a friend to play ball with or to watch, watch TVs with, or to like, you know, I know I love those things, but I'm also that friend as well, you know, to be there for you, to tell you that you're right. That shit is not okay. And things are not right right now. Let's let's sit in that for a little bit. Let's let's honor that and let's try to move forward in the best way that we know that we can. So I think like it's just beneficial having these conversations because like this shit is really hard. Like I don't think nobody if you if you're saying that it's not, then that's a part of the that's a part of the shit that's sinking our ship, if that makes sense. Like that's a part of the shit that's bringing us down. Like if you're over here pumping that this shit is not hard, like that is part of the reason why, right? We feel like it's out of nowhere when people are like having these rushes of feeling like they don't want to be here anymore. And it's not out of nowhere. Like, I think like Felix said again, like we really all, like we all have moments of feeling inadequate. Like that is very, very common. And I don't mean it in a way where it's like, like lovingly common. Ob obviously we don't want it to happen, but let's be honest, right? Like honesty is like the one factor that we really don't have, especially as men and feelings like, like feeling inadequate. Like even again, even at the age of me, like, succeeding goals there are still times like where i'm like am i am i enough am i doing enough right like so i think just being more honest about that being more like because then when i'm honest about that as weird as it sounds i have a conversation with myself like first of all sit down relax <laughs> like I i'm happy you confided in yourself and shit and we're figuring this shit out but you have done a lot for yourself now if there are things that you want to go and do go execute those don't bullshit yourself don't waste your time now that because those are also things that can bring you down Honor where you're at, honor the things that you've done great. And if you want to do more, do that. Do the actual steps it, it takes to do those things. Other than that, I think it's just like part of the part of the stigma, part of the, you know, the stigma of not feeling like you're enough, part of the stigma of we have to just do it all by ourselves. And part of the stigma that we're like strong enough alone. I think that's what it is. It's like we feel like standing alone we're strong enough. And that's not true. We need our wives, we need our kids, we need our families, we need our friends. We need our games. We need our our, our, our our basketball time. We need our our gyms. We need everything that we need. Our music. Um, so my apologies for taking up that time. I just kind of got got caught up in there. So. I'm just gonna pop in to echo. It is so hard. It just feels like a relief even to like hear you say that, because uh, you know I mean almost every day this last week, I've been like, this is impossible. Life is so hard, you know, like those having those moments. Um, and I think it is really easy to sort of like those moments will try to like swallow us up. Um, and I think it's exactly like what you said, Serrano, like we think that we're strong enough or like for me, you know, it's like, I think, or like, that's my goal. Like I, I really want to be able to like do this on my own. And it's nice to have help here and there, but it's like, no, we actually have to like switch that. Or at least that's something I'm personally working on is like, sort of how do I switch that up? Um, because I don't like deep down believe that, like, I wouldn't say that about any one of you that like, you need to be strong enough on your own. Um, and so it's like, oh, okay, why do I, I hold myself to that, you know, imperfect or like perfect standard that I will never be able to attain. Um, and so then the other thing I was thinking about is, you know, um, 
brings me back to like what I was first talking about is that reminder of hope and the reminder, like taking the time, like what we're doing right now, right. To like, look back at the year. And I think I'm a person who's constantly like, okay, how can I grow more? Like how, okay, I did good here, but like, actually I could do a little bit better or I could have done this different, you know, like I'm always kind of thinking about the growth and like um, leaning into that. And it's like, I, uh, I miss the actual growth. Cause I'm like constantly, you know, moving towards the next thing. Um, and I just had a moment in the last day where I had told, I think it was, I told Amy, my wife, it was like, you know, I have worked really hard to change and to grow and I can see that happening and it feels really good. And I feel proud of myself. And that is not because I did it. <laughs> I mean, I had a small part in it, but it's mostly because of the people around me who have been my anchors, who have been my teachers and healers, um, <laughs> confidants and angry people who will like rant with me when I'm, you know, feeling the rage about whatever. Um, and will let me have that space too, you know? Um, so yeah, I think it's, you know, if, if I could say anything to folks watching and, and to, you know, my chosen fam and community, it's just like, let's try to remember like how far we have come. This was, you know, another year that was challenging on a lot of levels for uh, so many of our different communities. Um, and I think we're still here. We're still taking care of each other. We're still doing the things we, you know, we can do hard things. <laughs> it's kind of been a mantra that some of my friends have been reminding me of in the last week is like, you're doing it. It feels like you're... You know, it feels like I'm failing at being a father or at being a husband in these moments. Um, and I know that I'm not because I'm still here and I'm still trying um, and I'm still talking to you guys and, and connecting with the people who are, um, you know, good and healthy for me. Um, and so, yeah, I just I really like what you said there, Serrano, about like, like um, learning to take care of ourselves more so that like hey, I can actually feel good and be like doing this life thing. If I actually just take a little bit of time to do some Tai Chi. I did that yesterday after I snow blowed though. I don't recommend that. Um, <laughs> I didn't quite make it uh, the total 20 minutes, but I did about 15 and then my muscles were like, bro, you got <laughs> you to sit down and drink some water. But even that, you know, like the fact that I thought I should drink some water. It's like these basic things. Um, that we can learn and practice um, to feel better, right? And to encourage those around us to feel better. I was reading something yesterday um, on Facebook and it said, what did it say? To, to, um, to some of what you were sharing there, Sean, and I think Serrano touched on it too, is on the light when things get so hard and difficult. I think one is that it depends on how uh, you, what value you put on that, right? Because I always share with people that stress is just stress. Joy could be stress too, right? It's not, stress isn't just like the, additive quote unquote of like bad things only but good things can be stressful as well too it's just a matter of like your um your value that you've placed on it with as labeling it as good or bad anyways there was this quote that i was reading yesterday that i'll share with all of you from marwa raka if i'm saying their name correctly someone once told me that human beings have three dimensions how you see yourself, how others see you, and how you want others to see you. The closer the distance between the three dimensions, the more at peace you are and the more stable you become. You know, someone once told me that human beings have three dimensions. How you see yourself, how others see you, and how you want to, others to see you. The closer the distance between the three dimensions, the more at peace you are and the more stable you become. 
I, I think that speaks so much to um, that alignment um, and the centering and the grounding that I think Serrano had shared and Felix had talked about as well too. Um, and that all of us in some ways had talked about and throughout the course of our conversations these last two years is about that, right? About like that healthy healthiness for men and masculine folks means being centered means being taking care of yourself right means being grounded um in your values um means being rooted in your identities um valuing that for yourself right and i i think that um sometimes uh we can get thrown off the course of life for ourselves because of our perception of how people may perceive us right and that tends to be like the traditional ways in which men and masculine move in this world is we always are living by the notions of what it means to be a man and means to be masculine by other people's perception of what that is and they're trying to live up to that but no no idea quote unquote or um no uh no understanding or definition of that for ourselves or redefinition of manhood and masculinity for ourselves and being able to then um uh, like sort of um radiate that out to others you know and, and to um, to others and i think that that's why the felix's point and we had talked about this i know a couple months back about like that the number one killer for men is suicide is because of that right because of the uh, nature of how men get into their own and masculine identified people get into their own silos and it's like this is just too much despair depression whatever the case may be and it's like there's just no other way out you know and there's like endlessness or hopelessness uh, no no nothing and so um I, I think that that's why, like, the, hey, I should call Sean or I should call Serrano and just have a conversation with them is so vitally important, you know, in our conversations. And I think that that's what we built to Sean's beautiful point earlier about, like, I never think that I could call on, you know, Felix, but, like, you can because you we built, right? And, and then all it takes is just having these conversations right not the way that we're having it but and you don't have to have these conversations but what it takes is the building relationship part the connecting part the just being in community together part just the acknowledgement of one another that i can count on you part and i'm not gonna i'm not burdening you with um more and that i can open up myself to you and you can do the same right just that openness um is is already i think enough for some folks um already and so i do want to say that you know um we're still in COVID in some ways and you know it's not at the height that it was two years ago when we started first having kitchen table conversations you know to, to build this platform out and um was like a way to engage men and masculine folks in our communities uh and I think we still are seeing sort of the impact of COVID still in our lives, right? And so um, just remembering all the folks that we have also lost this year, whether personally in our own lives, in the world, or in people's lives, right? That you're connected to them in some ways. And sometimes there are some people that you're, you've never connected to, but just them not being here is already a loss and there's grief around that as well too so I, I just wanted to acknowledge that in my reflection here too and put it on the table like that we've lost a lot of folks this past year as well too or this year i should say in 2022 um and it is important to honor those individuals um who have no who are not no longer here with us I should say. Yep. Yeah, if you need, if you know someone who need help or need support, I think nine eight eight is the number for the suicide, a national suicide prevention hotline. So, you, I think you can text, you can call to that same number, or if you think there's an emergency, always remember to contact 
911. Uh, so to close for me, uh, I, I'm looking forward for this new year. I think I'm gonna take the holidays now to relax a little bit, spend it with the family. I have my my parents coming next week for a week, so I'm super excited. You know. Uh, to have them around, having around my daughters and spend time with them. Uh, so that's something that I, I'm really looking forward to that, you know, to, to that break of the holidays. And also looking forward for a new year with, you know, uh, of learning a new year of, you know, hopefully supporting and and, and keeping this conversation of, on, on healthy masculinity and, and allyship and, and try to, to, to to create an impact, you know, in the Latino community, the, the community that I work or the Latinx community uh, that I work here in the Twin Cities and also, uh, you know, Puerto Rico, uh, et cetera. So thank you everyone. Uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward for 2023 with a positive mind, super excited. I know there's a lot of positive and good things coming. So I wish everyone an amazing holiday season uh, hug your loved ones, remind them how much and how important they're for you. And, and yeah, and let's start a year with a positive a smile face. And yeah, and I know there's a lot of positive good things coming. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And ending for me, yeah, definitely going to take this break for sure. And one thing is, yeah, we, we definitely deserve it as a, as people we deserve a break um i'm even gonna leave my goddamn laptop down at the office if i need anything computer wise my cousin has a computer so i think to help myself be more disciplined as well um, i'm also gonna like try something for myself i think i i said earlier because things that i say apply to me too and i hope that i'll never like speak it to people as if it doesn't apply to me because that's not fair um and we all go through these things so there's a thing that i'm gonna try um there was a moment when i said you know, we have these feelings, especially as like men, where we want to try something or we want to do something and we just like wallow over it not happening instead. <laughs> um, so I'm going to give it a try. I think I owe it to myself to just say, fuck it, you know, give it a try. Um, see how I like it. See if I don't like it. Just see how it is. So I think more importantly for me, like acknowledge the break. I'm going to dive into some emotional things, too, that I just like have not given myself en enough time to do as well. So I think I'm going to actually break this break, if that makes sense. Um so yeah, that's that's my little in, and I hope y'all like get to get a chance to break as well, whatever that means for y'all too. If break means being with the family, being with the kiddos, being outside, um, being warm, I hope y'all get whatever y'all deserve too. So, all right, well, gosh. It feels a little sad to be wrapping up the conversation, <laughs> um, but definitely very excited for the new year coming, you know, new guest stars will be joining us. We'll be um, one of our very first conversations in the new year. We're going to be talking about uh, a program called the don't buy it project, and we'll do a, a short series about that. Um, so that's something to look forward to as well. And yeah, just, Building up our kitchen table here, I think, feels very exciting. Um, we've got, I know, I think it was just yesterday, Peg and I were making a list of ooh, all these amazing, incredible folks who are out there uh, just being amazing and doing great work in our communities. So we hope that you'll join us next year as we bring more and more awesomeness into these kitchen tables. So thank you again, all of you who joined us live, who are watching after the fact and, and stay connected with us. We deeply appreciate you joining these conversations. We also want to say thank you to our funders, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota. Thank you very much. And the Novo Foundation as well for all of their support. And yeah, as we said, this is our last one this year. We will not be back in two weeks. We'll be back in about, I think it's four weeks total. So join us next time on Thursday, January 14th at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Again, that first session we'll be focusing on Men as Peacemakers and Esperanza United uh, doing some co-collaboration work with the Don't Buy It Project. So tune in to learn more about that. Uh, and don't forget, like our Facebook page, 
Actually, you can turn on notifications, see first, so you will see every time we go live and you can join us and not miss one single conversation. You can also find all of our previous conversations on YouTube. Uh, we got a channel there, so check that out. You can like it, subscribe again. You'll get alerts when we upload new content. So definitely check out those things. And I guess, yeah, again, we're just wishing all of our community folks um, and loved ones and neighbors and colleagues a wonderful, happy, hopefully positive, stressful uh, holiday season. <laughs> Definitely take some time to rest, Serrano. I'm deeply happy that you said that. That's a good reminder for myself. So everyone take good care and we will see you in 2023.